Hello friends, I thought we were done, but actually, there's still some stuff to talk about when it comes to rigging. In the previous episodes, we talked extensively about streamlining your camera rig with small rigs, bits and pieces, and even about throwing up anamorphics on gimbals and enabling autofocus. This episode is about all the pieces that I couldn't fit anywhere else in particular, and that's why they're tricky. These are key pieces that usually come as an afterthought, but missing out on them can be extremely stressful on set. For example, a lot of times we need to connect two or more parts together. The parts are good to go, and all I'm missing is a screw of the right size, right thread, and right length. Then we'll spend a ton of time trying to figure out where we can steal a screw from the rig without compromising its structure. On top of that, I lose screws all the time. For example, I'll swap a 3 8 of an inch screw temporarily from the tripod blaze plate because I need two quarter inches, set the 3 8 aside, and forget where it went by the time I'm done. Let's be honest. Screws go missing all the time, and some of them are pretty annoying to replace. That's why I'm a big fan of this cheese plate made to hold screws and keys. I have a ton of room for 3 8 of an inch, quarter inch, M2.5, M3, M4, and M5 screws, and their corresponding hex keys held together by magnets. I'll carry this around with a few open slots and one, always be able to store any stray screws before I lose them, as well as two, have screws that fit almost every need on set. I've expanded the original set with longer quarter inches, as well as two-sided adapters and quarter inch to three-eighths of an inch adapters, some thumb screws, or pretty much anything I can make fit here. This piece was so useful that my sister would steal it from my box of parts and take it to set when she worked as a second AC. I find this cheese style organizer is faster and easier than a bag with a bunch of screws thrown in, which was my previous approach to this screw problem. If you like boxes more, you can also get that from Small Rig with a variety of screw sizes and lengths. How many times can I say screw in one sentence? The other thing I'm constantly struggling with is carrying too many or too few or just straight up the wrong size of hex keys, never having a coin on me, ruining my house keys, and other tool-related problems. To address that, I've added this folding screwdriver kit to my bag. It features a decent flat head, a Phillips head, a Torx head, and four different hex sizes, usually the ones I need. Plus, if I'm really in a pinch about screws, like I mentioned a moment ago, I can slot them into the tool so I don't lose them in the heat of the moment. The last stress point of things I would love to not worry about are cables. Cables break or fail, or both, all the time. So I have lots of spares. I prefer to keep my cables as short as possible so the rig is cleaner, so I usually have at least a pair of USB and HDMI, or SDI cables, besides what's built onto the rig. I also like to think of different heads, like right or left angles, so the cable is less likely to break or get in the way. Make sure you're properly equipped with these rigging-related extras before heading out to set, which is the perfect segue into our next module. I hope you had a good time and upgraded your rigging skills over the last few episodes. We covered a lot of ground and many of the topics weren't really anamorphic-related, but rigging is still a secret art to many. If you have any horror stories from set about being short on rigging equipment or improvised solutions, I'd love to read them in the comments below. I'm always debating if some of the stuff I build is janky enough to submit to shitty rigs, but I end up never sending it in. Thank you so much for your time, and I'll see you soon. Chit the feathers, out.